What's up everyone, my name's Inno, and today I've put together a jungle deep dive. This guide will be focused primarily for new players. I know we've got a lot of uh, new PlayStation players that are coming to the roster this week, so hopefully this will help you guys out. Or, you know, if you're a veteran predecessor player, but you've never really stepped into the jungle and you're a little intimidated by it, um, this will also help you out. We're just simply gonna go through some tips and tricks on how to effectively uh, utilize the jungle. Um, if you guys like this content, please check me out on Twitch under Indo Complex. I stream daily. I also upload daily here on YouTube. I do guides, uh, gameplay videos, also YouTube shorts. So if, uh, yeah, come check that out. Uh, much love, guys. Hope you enjoy the video. This one will be a little bit longer format. I try to go really into detail, into the nitty gritty stuff of pathing, um, how to use your smite, um, how to set up ganks, um, jungler suggestions, you know, really gonna, we're really gonna dive deep in this one. So yeah, much love. Hope you guys enjoy. Peace. Alrighty. So we're quickly just going to go over my top three hero suggestions, uh, for what you should use in the jungle. Uh, we're just using uh, predecessors main website here to check out some of the heroes. Uh, I'm not going to go, uh, too deep into what each kit does and everything like that just kind of a quick overall suggestion i do have a lot of hero guides that i make um especially more targeted towards the junglers if there's any guide that you would like to see just uh, leave that down in the comments below for me but yeah let's quickly dive into this uh, my number one pick biggest suggested hero always is chimera um, when you're starting off in the jungle um his Passive, which applies stacks of uh, health regen to his basic attacks. And when you maintain that, um, you can stack it up to 30, I believe. Um, this allows you to not worry about uh, kiting or doing anything fancy. You can literally just cleave the minions, stand in them, and uh, worry about you know looking at your mini-map, worry about rotations, because that sustain will just allow you to farm freely um, and not have to worry about backing or anything else. So I think... Because of that, it allows um, just for a smoother uh, learning experience in the jungle. Also, his kit is just is just big in general. Um, another highlighted thing is, is Invigorate, which cleanses CC and can actually do a 0.5 second immunity to his CC. But yeah, try him out. Amazing, a um, lot of fun, pretty straightforward character. Number one pick. Um, so if we go back, my number two pick <clears throat> would be Mr. Greystone. He's actually not suggested as an offlaner, or sorry, as a jungler. He is suggested as an offlaner, but he can be very powerful in the jungle. Um, he doesn't have the sustain that uh, that Chimera has, but uh, he has a lot of tankiness, and his ultimate um, can get you out of really sticky situations, and his mobility is very strong. So he's got crazy mobility, um, the one weakness I would say of Greystone in the jungle is you don't have a hard CC. So if you're gonna run him, preferably you'd have a hard CC somewhere, at least in the mid or like, you know, support. Um, you want some stuns on your team, um, ideally with him. But um, ultimately, if you just farm really hard with him and get that lead, then you can create a lot of pressure. He does have a slow with his E, uh, which can be good for securing ganks. Not as good as a stun, but you know, Still can provide good pressure, and then his ultimate is a stasis that heals you, so that can uh, be really powerful for tower diving. So he's a great pick, also very straightforward. Just farm really hard with him, try to get that lead. Um, really good for stealing jungle. Um, definitely, definitely highly suggested. And then my third pick for learning the jungle would be Mr. Crunch. Crunch is very powerful, um, has good cleave, has good CC. When you empower his um, his left crunch, he actually does an uppercut. Um, or sorry, if you empower his right crunch, it does an uppercut, which is good for securing ganks. His empowered left crunch does a cleave, good for farm. His mobility is insane. He uh, can actually recast his forward crunch with his ultimate to just move like halfway across the map can be nuts. 
for invading jungle, for um, just catching up to targets, locking them down. He is a monster. Um, my only thing, suggestion with Crunch, is try to rush to get that level six as fast as possible. Um, he really comes online when he has his ultimate. Um, and that's about it. I mean, um, his rotation is a little bit harder to get used to um, compared to, you know, Chimera or Greystone, but I think it is well rewarded once you get used to it. Also, this is a great character for controller players. I know you PlayStation players are out there. Um, I've always heard that Crunch, uh, his kit does well with um, controller. Not that Greystone and Chimera don't, but I've just heard it feels very good. So that's a nice little moment there and um those are my top three i would suggest trying to go with those first kind of learn them um and then i'll just do a few little quick um highlighted mentions i'm not going to go too deep um rampage amazing i always love to say he's the king of the jungle but um he doesn't really have a lot of damage in this game so i believe he's a little bit more team reliant he's great at setting up kills for your team if they follow up with the damage he's great at peeling he's great at being a main tank um, but initially when you're learning he's a little bit harder to hard carry with so i would save him for you know if you've got some guys in your team you're doing a duo trio stack or something and you um you know they're gonna put out the damage then try him out richter also can be a very powerful jungler um, just mechanically a little difficult you got to land those hooks Kalari, Kalari, I love her. I would suggest staying away from her um, when you're learning the jungle. Um, she requires a lot of mechanical skill and kind of awareness and positioning. So can be very powerful, just not beginner friendly um, would be my pick. Sevrog also can be very powerful in the jungle. Um, they made a lot of buffs to him in the past few patches to, to um, make him a much stronger jungler but you do have to always be thinking about your stacks and maintain your stacks. So that adds another little skill skill curve into your jungle rotation, but can be very powerful when learned well. I think now he can be great in the jungle, um, farm heavy with him, farm super hard. If he gets a lead, he can just destroy everyone. But um, if you are not ahead, he doesn't have hard CC or really anything to um, lock people down. So you really need that lead with Fang Mao, but can be powerful, just very hard to play. My Bay Sarith, uh, she's one of my main junglers. She can be extremely powerful, similar to Fang Mao, and really any assassin. You need to get that farm lead or kill lead to um, get that damage. And then you can just be an absolute monster, but a little bit harder. Um, Zaris can also be a great jungler. Um, mechanically, a little bit more difficult. Um, than some of the other junglers. Uh, but uh, once you get his kit down and kind of his 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 flow down, he is um, a monster. He's definitely up there. Countess, similar to Kalari, don't suggest her for beginners. Pretty difficult, need a lead, um, but you can harass the jungle, you can steal buffs really well. She can be extremely powerful. Um, and then that's pretty much it for for the junglers, um, you can throw Grex in there, but uh, his mobility is a little low, so um, usually people don't suggest that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for my suggestions. Again, try those three, Chimera, Chimera, Chimera. I'll drill that into people's head, try him out. He's awesome. And I uh, appreciate you guys. Check you on the next part of the video. Thank you. Alrighty, so first major tip, when you first log in as, uh, as jungle, um, I would, if you go over here, you can see your vision tab. You have your sentry, which is your uh, ward oh, sweeper, not bad either. Uh, which allows you to um, um, look for wards. And, oops, yeah, so sentry. It allows you to look for wards, and then stealth ward is your typical ward. So I would always start off with ward. Um, that's very important. Um, and I'll show you why. So often, at the one minute, 10 second mark, you wanna put your ward on blue. This will allow you to have vision in case the enemy jungler comes and tries to steal your blue camp early. Very, very crucial. So we'll see, it's about to hit 110, which is 15 seconds on that. You drop the blue board, the blue ward, head straight over to your red buff. 
I'm gonna pick up my Q for that, that cleave initially. We come over to our red side here. We're gonna clear our red. Um, the only exception to that ward uh, tip is if you're going against, try to pay attention, if you're going against a uh, Kalari or a Countess, those are the, the more likely heroes to do it to you, they might come for your red buff. Um, in that case, you can opt to not put the ward on blue, and you can ward over here in that corner. Um, or also hopefully have a teammate ward the other entry over here. Um, so yeah, we take that red, we go directly to two camp. Um, in this game, you want to prioritize your small camps versus the larger camps uh, because they provide more XP, which is more valuable. And also, um, you clear them faster, so you can uh, be ready to open up for ganks. Um, so the other thing about our, our, our smite, the way that smite works right here, or hunt, sorry, is uh, you basically evolve it just by clearing jungle. So... Um, in general, I would say most of the time, um, you just, you just spam it off cooldown initially, uh, just to increase your clear speed. It does apply a little bit of a burn and you want, you just want to try to get that 1000 hunt as fast as you can. Um, the exception to that role is initially, if you're worried about them taking your red buff and invading, um, instead of spamming it early, you can actually hold it to try and last hit the minion just to secure it in case they come um, and do invade you. But uh, other than that, initially, you're just spamming hunt off cooldown. Um, and then the key is when you get a little bit farther into the game, you uh, want to always hold one hunt for securing an objective, whether that is or Prime or that is your... Um, your uh, fang tooth. That is your job as a jungler is to uh, make sure you uh, secure these. Oh, gotta get this kill. Okay. All right, and we got that. We got that jungle. You see there? I went through my camps. Noticed my jungler was in trouble, and our jungler offlaner was in trouble. So I went over and immediately ganked for him. And that's pretty much the rotation there. Alrighty, so for this portion of the video, we're just gonna do a deep dive in the pathing. It's kind of an add-on to the previous section of the video. So we'll start off um, at a similar point and then kind of show you more in detail some of the routing. So uh, yeah, we start off here at core, take our jump pad to the blue, and we come on down here at that 110 mark, we ward our blue. Um, of course, unless we're trying to defend against a Kalari or Countess invading our red, which I mentioned before, where you would put a ward um, here, or and then hopefully get your teammate to put a ward here, and then you can defend your red. But in most cases, you want to ward that blue in general at that 110. So we ward the blue at 110, then we're going to take our pathing over here to our red, clear our red, Come back down to our three camp here. Take this out. And um, I will start off by showing the more passive pathing and what I like to call safe pathing. Um, there's another aggressive option, which I'll go over after, but uh, just to you know, keep it clear, we'll clear here. So we get that three camp, boom. Most of the time, I would say you leave this in most cases. Um, it's better to defend your blue side and get there as quick as possible. So after your three, we're gonna take this pathing path right back into here. And this is kind of where you have a point to decide. I usually come here, I look over, try to get some vision, no jungler on my threes, no jungler on my blue. If that is the case, I'll just clear this out right away. Boom, that gives me my level three. Then I come to blue, clear that out. And then here's the option where we can decide if we want to go for this three camp or if we want to gank. So most of the time I will not prioritize ganking in the off lane, but we will show you something here. So this is what I like to call the neutral zone. So this is the zone in yellow 
where it is possible to get a gank, but it is not 100%. You usually need a CC or something um, to get the gank or at least get their flash here. And then this would be the red zone or danger zone. This is kind of the zone where it's highly likely that you're able to get a kill. So depending on where the enemy is, we'll decide. So if they're here, um, or if they're here in the, in the complete dead zone, which is not even worth, then I will often just go directly and clear this full clear. And then at that point, um, when you're in here, you can hopefully, if you're in comms, you can tell your offlaner to freeze the lane as much as they can to set you up for a gank. Because if they freeze the lane, it'll get them into these sections. So that gives you an option to at least come in here and try to help them get the flash or um, make a play. If there's no play to be made, then we will come over here. Come here. Um, you can often, you know, help out by putting a ward if you have one off cooldown, um, you know, up here or something like that. But in general, you, know, you come here, look if there's any value you can extract out of this lane. If not, you will come up here. And then let's, let's back up a little bit. Oops. So we'll delete that. So let's continue where we were. So we're off of the three camp. We come up here. Now this is kind of an important decision um, making section. So if your laner over here, depending on how this lane is, this can set you up to see if uh, you can go for a jungle invade. If your laner, like I said, with the boxes is just getting totally shoved, then um, it might be risky to go for the jungle. Um, but often their jungler will, will most likely in this timing be on his blue side. So you should be safe to go for an invade. But like in general, if your laner has a lot of pressure, so we'll just do an arrow here. If your laner has a lot of pressure on this side, this opens you up for an easy free gank. Cause then your jungler, their jungler comes or their mid lane comes, your, um, your off laner can help um, invade with you. So this is kind of where you have to decide, is it worth me going for the invade? If you do go for that invade, um, I generally suggest going for this camp here. This should be still up unless their path timing is weird. So you can go here, you can take that out. Um, and then, you know, you could, you know, if you're gonna go even spicier, you could go for this two camp if it's up, but that's usually a little bit riskier. Often I'll just go for that. And then we make our rotation. We grab our river buff. If it is up on the timer and your timing is really good, you can contest that. Now as for river buffs, I recently have not been going and contesting the first river buff. I think it actually can put you behind. So in general, I go for the second, um, second, third river buff, you know, on, I'll, I'll start contesting. That first one, I usually leave to the mid laner and hope that they get it and just try to get a farm lead on the enemy jungler. So yeah, and then you pretty much, you go for that contest, same thing. You can come here, um, you can wait and we'll draw our, our little thing. So same with here, mid lane's a little bit smaller. So that'll be kind of our neutral box above this is kind of the dead zone where it's not worth. And then again, the red zone for them would be about here. So depending on if they're here, you know, maybe gank, if they're here, definitely gank. Um, and then you continue on your path through here and then you loop right back into your jungle and then you can do a full clear of everything depending on the timers. And this overall, I would say, is your safe, safe play. So yeah, once you come through here, if you get your red, again, you can go over to do a lane to gank. But that is the overall first rotation of what I call your safe rotation, where you just go your blue, um, sorry, your red into your blue, look for some opportunities of gank, come back to red, and then hard hit duo is usually what you're trying to do. You're trying to get over back over here. You know, you've already backed, you've got your, um, you, you backed once, you've got your, um, your item online, you come over here and you slap duo and try to get good value out of that. That's kind of how you set up that play. Now I will show you guys 
the second option. This is a little bit um, more of the aggressive option. So, you know, like I said before, blah, 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 ward your blue, come through here, get onto your red, go from red, go to your two camp, sorry, three camp, clear that out. Then you're gonna come over here for your Y option. So we'll come here, and then this is your point of decision right here, right in, in, in this doorway. So we'll do our boxes again for, for our duo lane, yellow zone, maybe, red zone, absolutely. So at this point, if you're gonna go for a gank and you have communication with your duo lane, right when you're, when you're doing this camp, you're gonna say, hey, these guys are being aggressive, hold a freeze. Try to get them, you know, in this, between this yellow to red line. Um, if you're able to do that, that's when you have the decision. Okay, I'm gonna come with my duo right away for an early gank, boom. Clap them here. Now I will highly, highly recommend, if you do not succeed with this gank, you will be behind, absolutely be behind. So if you go for an early gank, you wanna be almost 100% uh, sure that you're going to get um, at least multiple flashes or kills or get some crazy value out of it because it is, um, it is risking your farm to do this but it can be very powerful if it pays off. So that's your one option. Um, if that is not what you wanna decide, what you can do, and you wanna rush this if you do, so make your decision quick. If it, nothing looks good here, you're just gonna go straight up here, boom. You're gonna hit this blue. Clear their blue early, and um, be mindful. When you hit this, sometimes mid laners um, in this area they will uh, put a ward somewhere in here. So if you notice, oh, mid laner just turns, turns, turns over and looks at you, probably want to abort that. Probably not a good idea, but a lot of times they won't. And you can just come over here and usually because of the timing, um, often they will full clear unless they like, unless the jungler hits red, their small camp and then immediately rushes, um, often you will be able to get this blue. So you get this blue and then this is kind of the decision processing here. So I look at blue and I look at duo. Do, are they in those zones again that we're talking about? You know, we'll pull it back up. Are they in, are they in the neutral zone? Or are they in the danger zone? And then at that point I can decide, you know, they're here and I won't even worry about it. If they're above that point, if they're above that point, I will just go directly to three camp and, and chill and kill that. Be mindful of the jungler. What's the jungler doing? You know, I'll, I'll clear that out. Um, and depending on if I will gank or not, sometimes they're safe. Maybe I'll even just abort completely and you know, just head back. But that's kind of your idea is you're, you're taking this blue, looking over, can I get a gank? Um, sometimes I'll stall, kill this, see if I can get a gank. Other alternative is let's say your, um, Let's say, you know, you get your off laners got a word here. Uh, maybe your mid laners got a word over here. You're on his blue. And then all of a sudden, oh no, I see enemy jungler, he pings in here. So I know now enemy jungler, he's on this camp or he's on my blue. If that happens and you're here, okay, I'll just full clear. I know where their jungler is. He's on my blue side. I'm just gonna trade. So I'm just gonna do a full clear wipe his blue out, either go for a gank or just back and then try to um, try to come here and, and contest as, as quick as I can. And then and those are pretty much the options. Um, be mindful of where their jungler is because oftentimes, you know, I'll be, I'll be on their blue. Um, let's say I just finished the blue and then I see a ping here, you know, I see a ping here. Oh no, the jungler's here. I'll just either decide, do I have time? To immediately back, or do I have time um, just to full clear trade his 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 uh, blue side? And that is pretty much the two um, suggested pathings that I have for you guys. Um, yeah, and I'll check you guys out the next part of the video. Thank you. All right, so in this portion, I'm just gonna quickly show you guys kind of how you want to smite an objective. Um, like I said before in the previous part of the video, um, you want to get your hunt as quickly as possible on that upgrade point. 
uh, where you need, what is it, 40 um, stacks, which you get from just killing jungle minions uh, to upgrade that to the 1,000. If you have a 500 hunt versus an 1,000 hunt and you're uh, contesting for the objective, you're probably going to lose. It's way easier to smite when you have that 1,000 damage. And I'll just kind of quickly go over it. So you, the objective is you want to get it as close to that 1,000 mark as possible because you want to last hit the objective with just like that. I see I, I was at 9.10. You could go, you know, as you get better, you could get a little closer, but mainly you want to smite to full kill them on, on, on that point. And that's pretty much it. All right, I just wanted to quickly showcase what it looks like to get a objective steal with your smite in action. Alrighty, so in this part, I just wanted to give you guys a visual representation of how you sweep, and then I'll go back to our map view and kind of show you um, common ward locations on how to use your sweeper. But here I just have a clip where you can see I'm just um, sweeping around uh, Fangtooth Objective to look to get some, uh, some wards out. Murdoch saw me. I'm just gonna grab the river buff here and contest that. And you'll see, well, I'll throw on my sentry again here. Sweep around Fangtooth, see there's one, clear it. And then I look over here for entry ward, nothing. Go up here for stair ward, awesome, nothing. And that's pretty much a good idea of how we're gonna ward. Um, let me bring up to Photoshop just to finish this off and Let's see, so we'll go to our red color. So often, people will ward, here we'll zoom in a little bit, because this will help. Um, often, people will ward the entries here um, on these both sections. Um, so it's good to ward, actually, it'll be more like, usually they'll do it on like a wall, somewhere out here, but basically in this section. So you wanna come up here and sweep, sweep these, these points. Um, Obviously for the objective, often people will just put it here. Once in a while, people will put wards in the back pit. So you, I will like, I like to start my sweeper, you know, as you're, as you're coming into lane, you start your sweeper and then I walk all the way like onto the pit just to make sure I can catch any wards that are in the back area. Same thing goes for Fangtooth. Often people either put it back there or um, somewhere up there in the front. That's a good place. Um, but any of these kind of locations on how tight they are, I usually try to like to do a, 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 like a wrap around with uh, the wards. Because for mid laners, they'll often put a ward like here um, as another spot, or mid laners will often put a ward up here. Um, aggressive wards in your jungle, often people will sometimes put it either on a buff um, or usually by this three camp. That's another really popular spot in here or on your side on this three camp is another popular spot for enemies to put wards. Um, and then obviously these these entries, these are another, these are popular places to put wards as well. And um, up here would be another popular place to put wards. So you just utilize that sweeper. It's very powerful. Usually jungler, unless it's like some niche scenario, generally jungler is the only one with a sweeper. But again, your biggest priority is sweeping around the objectives. Very, very important. That will allow you guys to hopefully take the objective without even being known. And that's it. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in for this video. Uh, I appreciate you all. Again, if you guys want to check me out on Twitch, it's just Endocomplex. I stream daily. I post uh, videos here on YouTube daily. And um, yeah, I appreciate you guys all. Welcome, welcome, all you PlayStation players and uh, new Epic players and everyone. I'm just excited to have everyone here. And I want to um, share my experience and try to make the um, just uh, learning curve a little bit easier for everyone. So uh, yeah, check me out. Much love, guys. Thank you, thank you. Peace, peace.